the gates, ladies and gentlemen. The regular season is just happening tonight, and we here at Pigskin Pointers are ready to break down the first week of the NFL season. Uh, we're going to highlight tonight's matchup between the Patriots and the Steelers and fill you in on the Pigskin Pointers Props League. Uh, but first, why don't we introduce ourselves? This is Pigskin Pointers, only for the hardest of the hardcore. My name is Ryan Philip Lamb, and joining me today is Albert Gabriel. Hello, Ryan. This is Albert Gabriel, live from the Seattle, uh, Washington, in Queen Anne, where I am as riveting as most NFL fans for tonight's matchup. Oh, yeah, and then, of course, we have Seth Lazier. Hey, I just uh, woke up. I apologize. Usually I hibernate from the end of the Super Bowl to the beginning of the uh, regular season. So I'm focused. I'm excited for the season. That's awesome. Well, hey, we are looking forward to the season. We're going to be previewing that uh, first matchup, the Patriots and the Steelers, real quick here. But why don't we talk first about the Pigskin Pointers Props League. Now, the Pigskin Pointers Props League is a pretty dope league. We're going to be following it all through the season. Uh, basically, it's a bunch of fantasy football nerds just like us and just like you that decide to join in and uh, start a fantasy league. And uh, it, it's going to be fun. It's going to be. It's a 12-team league. We're going to be reviewing it every single week. And one of the cool things about it is that instead of money on the line, it's pride. It's all about the pride, pride. of the individual owners. Uh, yes, that's right. The bottom six people in this 12-man league are going to do some form of prop bet or dare on YouTube for your amusement, and you can check it out at youtube.com slash pigskin pointers once the year is over. So uh, why don't we uh, talk just quickly a little bit about that. Albert Gabriel, our very own Albert Gabriel, had the first pick in the league, and he went with Marshawn Lynch, first overall in a 12 Unconventional. Game. What is the deal? Well, there is no deal. The only deal is that I wanted to go against the grain, and I thought to myself, listen, AP, unanimous number one pick, obviously, uh, for just his athletic ability, his past performance. But I went with consistency and what I know. AJ Pearson did have a year off. Uh, he probably is not quite as uh, beastly as he was regarding his um, you know, physical strength. His ambition might be there, but I went with the sure thing, and I'm sure nine out of ten fantasy fantasy uh, pros would not agree with my choice. I know I don't. And I will defend this. Yeah, I think anyone did. When I posted that on the message board, it was literally on fire. Everyone was like, "Oh shit, you've got to be kidding me!" Uh, but Marshawn has, to me, more of a consistent. Like I think he's going to get at least 13 points a game. Probably throughout the season. Adrian Peterson, let's not forget his past uh, injury uh, history as well. Yeah, there was that season he missed a double, ACL, double MCL tear. We haven't seen him in the preseason at all. We haven't seen much in action. There's a lot of hype you know, around this guy you know, demanding uh, from owners that drafting him one that he's going to be this beast, which he might be, but are you going to put your whole team on it? I don't know. So I'm with probably the lower side, more conservative choice. Uh, with Marshawn okay, Seth, Lynch. What would you do if you were in his position? That's a good one because we've discussed there's like three or four different players who could go number one. You could argue Eddie Lacy. You could argue Le'Veon Bell. You could do with Marshawn or you could go with AP. If I was particularly in Albert's position, I'd just go Le'Veon Bell. Just the, He would be the safest bet except for the suspension. But numbers wise yeah, those two would games. be the most consistent over the season you, you know what's crazy and i've actually had the pleasure of drafting pretty near the top of the board and anytime i get a chance to i just go adrian peterson now this is the funny thing because i love lee bell you you seth of all people know my affinity for levy on bell i didn't end up with him in any one of my teams and any chance i had to grab him i ended up with ap am i crazy Yes. Oh. Absolutely not. I think you're, that is the wiser choice over Le'Veon. You know why? It's because those first two games of the season, 
are going to be huge for any fantasy team. For your morale, uh, just for, on, a, on a win percentage basis, Le'Veon's not going to be playing. He's going to have he's going to have z- zero points. So you're going to take your first round draft pick, and if you do the math, right, so two games out of 16, it's one eight. So you automatically have to cut his production by about 12 percent, automatically straight out the gate from whatever previous fantasy season projections are. And then you basically have to say, I have to use luck or my draft depth, which hopefully you drafted deep, and fill in that hole. I love that. That's, if you can, that's great. great analysis, actually, right there. Uh, and that's it's a, this is a funny thing that not a lot of people will think about. But, yeah, there is a degree of you need to have that momentum or morale as you're playing throughout the year. Now, some people might argue against that. But me, personally, I know if I start the, the year off 0-2, I'm feeling pretty crappy about myself, and I'm blowing up my team. I think anyone would, starting 0-2 in any sport, under any circumstances, especially in a, in a uh, league where there's only, uh, you know, there's less than 15 games in a season, potentially, yeah, absolutely. for you. And you know what, that's, a, that's <laughs> the exact thing. As much as we are not getting out there and lacing up the cleats and putting on the pads, this is a sport for us. Fantasy football is pretty much our sport, so... We play it, and boy, does it suck when you lose. Mm-hmm. Seth, do you have any final thoughts, or how about you give me a, a quick rundown of how you felt you did in your draft this year? Well, I went ultimately receiver heady, heavy on my team, Harbon Nagila, a tribute to my Jewish heritage. <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now you get it, all right. So, so I went receiver heavy because I wanted to be so good at one position I not only would I have trade options but I'd have almost an unfair advantage so I went Des Bryant first round and then Calvin Johnson second round which gives me two receivers mm-hmm. I absolutely love I could absolutely count on mm-hmm. and really gives me good depth too at the receiver position in case someone does get injured I think that that's amazing, actually, because you typically are a running back first kind of guy, and you kind of went with the closest thing you'll ever come to, uh, come to a zero RB style of drafting this year. Well, I got to be honest with you, Ryan. All that stuff I told you about, I wanted to throw you off for the draft. What? So, I, yes, I had oh. a strategy. I didn't want, a hint. I didn't want you in on my mindset about how I usually draft. So I was really <laughs> pulling a prank on you for the past two or three months however i am very happy with my team although my starters at running back tj yeldon and giovanni bernard i will need to be paying close attention to the waiver wires yikes yeah seth the deceptor that's going to be my de facto team name for you (laughs) that's for sure i love that no and you know what this is funny because i actually mentioned this to you guys before I don't care about either of your strategies. I've won so much money in fantasy football that I'm pretty much solid. I'm good to go. I don't peep other people's technique. If anything, people are going to be peeping our techniques throughout the season. That's why we have the Yeah, podcast. totally. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's the purpose of this. Yeah, yeah we try you know, to, fan with... I, I try to give people as much angle, as much strategy, so listeners, you have chose the right podcast to listen to. Because you'll get a variety of strategy. That's for sure. Now, yeah, if you take a look at my draft, uh, it's, it's been fantastic. Actually, uh, I've been picking quarterback like so late in every single one of my drafts. And every single one of my teams is above average and is going to be competitive this year. And I freaking love it. Although, the whole thing with Mike Evans, I have Mike Evans in almost every single one of my teams because he kept on dropping. And uh, he didn't practice today. Oh, crap. Yeah, uh, but yeah, he did not practice today. Uh, I haven't read the most recent reports, but uh, looks like he's questionable. Uh, probable to questionable for this week. Is he's that what question- that's what I'm reading? He's questionable. So the advice we can give to all of our listeners right away is just have someone ready. If you got and the problem is, is that he's actually going to be on the Sunday game, uh, the middle game. So. What you got to take a look at is do you have someone playing after 10 a.m. or, um, you know, depending on where your time zone is, the uh, 1 p.m. start? Uh, the early game, uh, you're not going to be able to replace Mike Evans with anyone from the early game. So hopefully you have someone later on. There's two Monday night games, so that's going to help out. 
But, you know, if you have Mike Evans in your lineup, you are going to be paying attention to basically my Twitter because I'm going to be tweeting the entire Sunday. Holy crap. Is Mike Evans playing? I don't know. So follow me on Twitter at Van RPL and I'll give you the lowdown. But uh, yeah, make sure you have a valuable, like decent fill in for that particular position on Sunday. Just in case. All right, why don't we move right along? Uh, why don't we take a look at tonight's game? Holy crap, finally, NFL action. Oh. oh, wait, we can't even do that. Thursday night football. We're taking a look at the Steelers, and they are playing in Foxborough at New England. The New England Patriots, obviously there has been a lot that has been made about the whole Tom Brady issue. He will be playing all 16 games, so all you Pats fans rejoice. Uh, why don't we start off with Albert. Albert, how do you feel Pittsburgh's chances are going into Foxborough this Thursday? Uh, I think that they are going into a game that is going to be very high emotion for both teams. And I think that if we're looking at an edge, you have to look at uh, the Patriots, what they've got going for them. Their morale's high. The crowd's going to be ferocious. Tom Brady's going to be on his high horse. Uh, we got a little, you know, we have Le'Veon Bell sitting out, but the Steelers defense, they have talked about and they are at about shutting down turning down the red zone closing down those gaps making sure gronk's not a threat and they are committed to uh shutting them down now talk is cheap we'll have to see uh but if i had to put uh you know hypothetical um you know money on this game obviously or ramen noodles whatever um <laughs> It's almost a wash, but I would probably say that the Patriots have the edge. Absolutely. The current uh, sure. voting Vegas line has uh, New England as a, only a 52% favorite. Uh, the live betting has currently got New England as a minus seven. Uh, That's favorite. probably so that's pretty good, actually. The voting, uh, the betting, sorry, has been going definitely in New England's favor. Uh, and I think that really has to do with Tom Brady, the whole angry Tom effect. Seth, what do you feel? Do you feel like angry Tom can save this New England Patriots team that hasn't had the continuity it's had over the last couple of years? Well, if angry Tom can't save them, uh, I'm sure that the Pittsburgh secondary can because they are just not looking good back there. Uh, Tom m might play with a vengeance, but knowing Tom Brady, he's going to play it cool and just control the game. As he well should. Um, and you mentioned the Pittsburgh secondary, but New England's secondary is actually it has a lot of younger faces and not a lot of continuity. That was specifically what I was talking about. In fact, their defense has not necessarily looked all that good uh, in the preseason. Do you think that that's going to be a factor, Seth? No, because it's the preseason. I mean... I, I mean, I've played a few snaps for the Patriots secondary this preseason. <laughs> I got I got cut within the first steps onto the field, but still. Uh, Belichick but, uh, is like, it, what the hell are you doing? Get off the field! Yeah, You didn't, you didn't have to say anything. He just gave that cold stare, and then he and Seth just urinated himself and ran right, right, right into the locker room. Exactly. He scared me so bad. But, <clears throat> but I do know that... Uh, Fantasy-wise, uh, Tom Brady should have a very solid game amongst, and I would definitely recommend that if you have Gronkowski, just thank your lucky stars that Troy Polamalu and Ike Taylor are both gone. Yeah, yeah that's totally. true. Gronk is such a plus matchup for this particular game. Why don't we talk about players that uh, we think are going to be doing the best? Why don't we start with Albert? Who's your player of this game? Well, I think as uh, Seth stated, obviously Tom Brady's going to be a huge uh, boomer, but uh, if anyone's going to score touchdowns, uh, I think uh, the second or the running back core of the Steelers is very uncertain. So no one really knows who's going to get those TDs. Go for the sure thing. Uh, if you have a very weak flex, get any of Wheaton, put him in there. He could probably get you a solid tenna, you know. Uh, but that is probably the only person on the Steelers. I was just going to have a huge game. But Tom Brady, obviously, is going to uh, not disappoint. Um, and probably give you at least 25 fantasy points in traditional right. sense. Well, that's, that's two players for the price of one. That's awesome. Seth, who are you looking at at this particular game? Well, I like to keep my eye on wide receiver Aaron Dobson for the Patriots. He's a second-round pick just going into his third year. He's been hurt the past couple of years. 
but he's a big target. He's somebody who could make plays, and definitely Tom Brady might uh, look towards him a few times. So if you're going to scout the waiver wire, definitely take a look for Aaron Dobson this game. Well, that's one of the things a lot of people who, uh, a lot of owners who have Julian Edelman, they're going to be looking to have a fill-in because it doesn't look like Edelman's going to be able to go today uh, from what I've been Mm -hmm. hearing. So you want to be looking at Danny Amendola. You want to be looking at Aaron Dobson. Sorry, Dobson. You know, if he could catch a damn pass, wow, he would be something in this league. If, yeah, if is the key word there, and that's why uh, if if he had better hands, I would have put him above Wheaton for sure. But all right, well, why don't we uh, why don't we go down the line? Uh, just pick the team you think is going to win. Albert, who do you think is going to win? Uh, I would definitely say the Patriots. Patriots? Okay, Seth. Patriots. Okay, and just to be a contrarian, I'm going to go with the underdog, the Pittsburgh Steelers. So that should be pretty good. Um, I don't know if anyone has been reading my Facebook page, <laughs> but uh, we here at Pick Pointers are actually going to be uh, doing a few uh, articles from time to time, hopefully uh, once a week. And right now we're looking for a platform. So, hey, if you are a sports blog that is looking to have the best quality fantasy football analysis, uh, have us come on to your blog. We'd be a great addition to your squad. Go ahead and tweet at us, at VanRPL, and ask for producer Franklin. He can help you out with uh, what you're looking for. But, yeah, uh, what I had actually done was I wrote a little blog piece called The Brady Effect, uh, which is a little pros and cons piece regarding uh, just the fallout from uh, the Tom Brady decision. Now, uh, Albert, what did you think of the piece? I thought that it provided a lot of insight as to like the current culture of the uh, of the NFL and uh, the the change is probably going to be coming uh, in the coming uh, years, uh, if not months, regarding the autonomy of the NFL. Uh, I, I really liked the um, I'm, I really liked the ability of uh, your ability to relate to. Uh, everyone the importance of what just happened. I think that a lot of people are going to underestimate it because as fantasy um, fantasy people, we have been subjected to the arbitrary nature of Goodell for a long time. You look at you know the suspensions handed down Absolutely. last year, whether it's Gordon for smoking weed, um, you know, Ray Rice's, uh, Adrian Peterson, uh, really not by committee and um, basically judge, jury, execution are all in one facet. I think that this ruling, as you can agree, really is a huge plus to everyone regarding more fair decisions, more concise decisions, a better, uh, you know, a better um, expectation of what to expect. Because suspensions affect everyone, every team, uh, every player, obviously more than we can even imagine. But as fancy players, absolutely. And uh, I think that it was a, an important piece and. Uh, I really agree with what we yeah. had to say. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Yeah, I was pretty much just uh, taking all of our opinions and boiling it into one uh, one bigger piece. But yeah, like that's one of the things that fantasy fans normally will do is they they have a very myopic view. What are the numbers? What are the stats? What's going on? Who's injured? Who's not? And fantasy is all about the game itself, which is funny enough. Something like this that people might not understand could have reverberations longer term. And mm-hmm. so what I'm thinking totally. is that the next CBA is going to be a bloodbath. Seth, do you think that there these issues of Goodell's uh, overpowered sort of approach to uh, doing his commissioner duties, do you feel like that is going to negatively impact the next round of collective bargaining? Well, any negative press will impact the next round of collective bargaining because it gives them the players union more points to bring up during it. So it will definitely impact it. And I really, as you know, Ryan, I am, as you know, Ryan, I'm as anti Goodell as anybody. So I really think that the players union might take a hard stance and maybe an ultimatum to get rid of Goodell, knock on wood. Well, you know, they have had unprecedented uh, success under Goodell, but of course, just the way that they're handling things, it's not, it's been very unilateral. It's been very heavy handed. So it, it, there are some worries as far as that's concerned. So if you have a chance or you manage to stumble upon that article, it's the Brady effects. It's uh, a pro and cons piece. 
uh, go and check it out. You can find it somewhere. Uh, why don't we talk about the next piece that we're going to be releasing very soon? In fact, it has a lot to do with tonight's game, uh, being the Patriots. It's the backfield breakdown piece that Albert you wrote. Now, tell me. A- That's correct. Now, this is great. You're actually going to over the next couple weeks. You're going to be analyzing four teams uh, that are currently looking at a situation where they're going to be running back by committee. Now, I, I really love this piece. Tell me a little bit about your insight as far as the Patriots were concerned. Well, the Patriots uh, are probably the only team exclusively where, as we're talking about, it's really I'm right, we're talking about arbitrary decisions. Uh, Bill Belichick uh, is pretty much, if not the only, a dictator of whom is going to hold the ball. He is very 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 unforgiving regarding errors uh fumbles obviously as, as both you know will result in benching potentially uh you know mistakes you know not proper read so on and so forth so although this is one of the most su- successful offenses in the league it's very hard to determine who is going to be uh potentially a fantasy stud but if we look at the past two years perhaps it'll give us some insight uh so if we look in 2013 uh, Shane Vereen was on the team then, Stephen Ridley, and Jonas Gray, who is, uh, was cut as of a couple of days ago, and LeGarrette Blunt. These four players only shared uh, 1,424 yards and 12 touchdowns. The only person to start every one of those games was Shane Vereen, uh, and he only got two touchdowns. Jonas Gray got five, LeGarrette Blunt got three at the, uh, at the line. If we look a little bit farther ahead, uh, everything was early split last year. Okay, so like, so we look at Stephen Ridley and LeGarrette Blunt. At 773 and 772, respectively. So oh, in 2013, they split there, at, and that. seven touchdowns each, right? And then they each had, I think, Stephen Ridley had 62 receiving yards, and then LeGarrette Blount had 38. So pretty even regarding everything. Uh, and both of those numbers are really great flex numbers, right? So if you were to retrospectively look back, you'd be like, I'm going to start, if you're going to average it out week to week, you would start either one of those guys in your flex slot. Now, this year, it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, Jonas Gray is obviously cut now, uh, but you need to be very weary of what's going to be happening there in that backfield. It's not a reliable, fancy backfield, but keep an eye. You know, this is where be- keeping an extra, keeping this information, you know, this insight, watching week to week may pay huge dividends in the waiver wire because on injuries, and anyone that Belichick favors, it could tell production and be absolutely great flex players for you um gronkowski i think is still gonna get most of the uh, red zone numbers i think that's not going to change but if he's not healthy that could change dramatically so even more of an emphasis to keep uh keep an eye on this backfield uh but at this point in time no one knows whom is going to um if anyone rather Take the majority of the right. carries well who's going to be the leading points. the charge tomorrow or tonight sorry uh, I would have to say that, uh, uh, I would look for, uh, LeGarrette at the, I would look for LeGarrette at the, uh, not LeGarrette, excuse me. Brandon um, Bolden? Brandon Bolden at the, uh, gold line. Okay. Exactly. Excuse me. Yeah. That was blunt, blunt. Yeah. Brandon Bolden at the gold line is probably the only running back I would I'd be able to count on. As we discussed earlier, t- uh, Tom Brady is going to be a huge threat. Gronk is lead red zone threat. None of the running backs on, in the backfield tomorrow they are going to be starting, I think are going to pay dividends in any fantasy sense or any practical right, sense. So Seth, one of them's going to get a touchdown, right, but so Seth, one of them are going to produce. Think Deion Lewis is worth a flyer? No, I don't think. There's too much going on in the with the running back by committee. You just got to take the two biggest names that have the best history in the system. Yeah, absolutely. And and like you're saying, like at, uh, the moral of the story, Albert, is that uh, basically just pay attention to who Belichick favors, if he favors anyone. And it's not like anyone can penetrate that hoodie of his to, to read his mind. Or exactly. Anything. So just pay attention, see who's in the doghouse, that sort of thing. Well, anyways, let's move on to uh, previewing the rest of the games. Oh, baby, this Sunday at Bleachers in Greenwood, or Green Lake, sorry, that is going to be the place to be. You can catch us there. We're going to be hanging out, watching some games. Come and say hi. We'll say hi back. We're really friendly, kind of, maybe. 
very friendly kind of well, maybe is the perfect way to describe it. I know that it. Seth will be wearing his, uh, some sort of Packer paraphernalia. Why don't we talk about the Packers? It's going to be the Packers, Green Bay Packers. They're in Chicago going to Soldier Field. How do you think uh, Green Bay is going to be faring, Seth? Well, I figure they'll win, but not as easily as you might think. Just because John Fox running a defense, you're going to see massive uh, improvements from last year and i think that it's still going to be a packers victory however not as much as one might think fair enough um albert when you're taking a look at this game who is your one favorite player uh for fantasy purposes in this game Matt forte he's, he's good for two touchdowns i think whoa I think Matt Forte is going to do some damage. I mean, the, the, the Green Bay Packers aren't for the run defense. Uh, the Green Bay Packers are going to win the game, but I think that if uh, if the if the, the if the Bears can get down the field, he's going to be your guy to, to get some yards. Their passing game obviously has a lot to question. The, the strength, as Seth stated, is in the defense. And if you're looking for one player to score on the whim, a couple of touchdowns, definitely Forte, but obviously Rodgers is guaranteed some huge points as well. Randall Cobb is a little oh, hurt, so I'm going to have... One player, not three. <laughs> Thanks, Albert. Um, Forte, now, just a quick question about Forte. Now, you're saying that he's good for two touchdowns. Are you not scared at all about what the major fantasy football group think of Forte was this whole offseason where it, he's the whole offensive scheme is changing you've got john fox coming in you've got uh uh you've got that new system and adam gaze uh being the offensive coordinator you've got that new system doesn't that mean totally passes towards forte i say week one you're conservative and sure points so if i'm john fox do you want to go with the conservative type system your conservative plays for your first week you want with a sure thing and that's your back so maybe not 14, maybe not two touchdowns, but I would say two touchdowns worth of points. I mean, 12 points, 14 points worth for Matt Forte. Uh, yeah, absolutely. All right, let's go to Seth. Like Seth, said, who is your number one player for this game? Well, the guy I want you to keep an eye on is a Rodgers, but not one of the Rodgers that you think. Uh, a waiver wire pickup might be Jacquez Rodgers, the backup for Matt Forte, because he's a really good receiver out of the backfield. And John Fox has been known to use a running back by committee as his previous mm. stops of Carolina and Denver. So definitely take a, a look at Jacquez. Perfect. That's a great waiver outlook. Thanks, Seth. And the player that I am going to be picking for the fantasy stud is going to be Devontae Adams. Are you kidding me? Like, just the opportunity alone to be catching passes from Aaron Rodgers is phenomenal. And this boy has got hops. He has got the hands that take take you places. Like he is a great wide receiver. He's about to have the best season of his career, as long as he's with the Packers. Because next season, when Jordy Nelson comes back and takes his spot back, well, then he's going to be relegated. But I'll tell you what, this is the year where Devonte Adams can really make a name for himself, and I'm really excited to see what he can do. Let's move on to the Kansas City Chiefs. They're going to be playing the Houston Texans. Uh, right now the line is favoring uh, Kansas City 55%. Uh, uh, yet uh, when you take a look at uh, the Vegas line, Houston's actually a one-point favorite, which is interesting. Hmm. I wonder, is this one as much of a wash as Pittsburgh and New England there, Albert? I would say it is probably the biggest wash of any of the games on Sunday. It's going to be pretty clo hard to determine who's going to win and what the strengths are. I think both Houston and Kansas City obviously have very strong defenses. What we're looking for, obviously, is the offense and what both of them are going to be able to do against each other. And both of them have not necessarily shown their capability thus far. So I would say it's about a wash. Fair enough. Who's your one player point. who you really like in this matchup? Oof. To be honest with you, if there's any matchup where I would not pick a fantasy guy, it might be this one. But I would say Jamal Charles, absolutely. Uh, although the, the Houston D is very strong. I think that he's had a huge offseason. He's going to have a couple a couple good plays. Yeah, especially if you're looking to swing some passes out to Jamal Charles. I can see that secondary kind of being a little bit more uh, uh, susceptible to that. They have a really good front seven for sure. After that, it's kind of hit or miss. Seth, 
Uh, what's your waiver wire outlook for this particular game? Well, check out Alfred Blue. It, sometimes in a lot of leagues, he's already picked up, but he's going to have some big games just uh, in terms of looks and carries and targets just because Arian Foster is going to be back soon. But definitely Alfred Blue, if you mm-hmm. need points fast in the beginning of the season, check him out. Now, is there any worry about keeping Alfred Blue with Arian Foster's return looming? It could be anywhere from, say, a month to uh, six weeks, I've been hearing. Uh, definitely, you can, he's going to be a backup, but if he does well, def, he could definitely, definitely, three more times definitely, be more of an asset to <laughs> in the office and still. Fair enough. Okay, the one player that I'm going to get you guys to target as far as fantasy champions are concerned, I would say DeAndre Hopkins is no doubt, like, and I have to admit, after watching Hard Knocks, you can't help but like this guy even more. He is a legit number one wide receiver in the NFL, and I don't care who's throwing him the ball. He's going to catch it. He's going to do something spectacular, and my prediction is that he's going to hit pay dirt twice in fact i would say that he hits pay dirt twice before matt forte hits pay dirt twice all right we shall see well uh i think you said there is that question there's no question of his talent but as uh who is going to be under pressure and being able to give him the ball that's my only question with deandre yeah, for yeah, sure. with hoyer behind center that is definitely a the, destroyer. Hoyer, the destroyer or the destroyer yeah. Let's not get. Let's not kind of you know. Let's not short sight this no, no, guy. You have Come to on, work let's get the proper in. respect. I no, I respect that, Albert, for sure. All right, <laughs> moving right along, we have got the Cleveland Factory of Sadness versus New York <laughs> Jets in the Meadowlands. Uh, am I the only one who thinks that Cleveland doesn't have a shot in hell in this game? Uh, you are definitely not. It's good. It, I I think that it's going to be a weak game, but I don't see Cleveland winning, especially since they're no one even knows who's going to be starting quarterback. They say Johnny Manziel is. If that is the case, everyone knows that he. Anyone, anyone in the fantasy community, rather, unfortunately, I'm trying to dare anyone, knows he's not worth his weight and you know salt whatsoever. And uh, there's no one on that team. They've got a running back by committee at best. Yeah, they just picked up, what, Terrence West? Who knows what the hell is going to happen with that Terrence team? West. Well, they traded Terrence West. Cut him. Yeah, they cut him. Yeah. Exactly. They traded him. To, yeah, so what? The, what's going on there? Uh, it's it's going to be another dark, dark season on the Erie Lake, or Lake Erie, rather, for uh, – Oh gosh, I, I I would almost feel sorry for them if they didn't have LeBron in the N- NBA. Uh, who's the one player that you want to look out for that you think will pay fantasy dividends in this game, Albert? If anyone has a shot, I would probably definitely see J. Ivory for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, Chris Ivory uh, for the Jets. Yeah, Chris I Ivory. Mean, like, yeah. He's going to totally. be run into the ground pretty much. Uh, hopefully, he can stand up to that because he was pretty injury prone in New Orleans. But I really like his chances, and you know that he's one of those backs who can get a lot of touch uh, behind a line can that can really move a pile. So that's pretty decent for sure. Uh, how about the waiver wire outlook, Seth? Well, first, I just want to say I do believe in Cleveland. They're actually a dark horse playoff team for me. What? Uh, hey, you looked at their uh, division, Seth, recently. Yeah, the, the Steelers are reeling. The Ravens are reeling. Cincinnati's nothing special. And I, last year, everybody talks like they were a 2-14 team. They went 7-9. and nine. They got a solid coaching staff. And I really think that they're a team that you shouldn't take lightly. Fair enough. I mean, but two words, uh, Josh McCown. I mean, yeah, I, I know, I know. Who's leading this team? I know, and they're the Browns, so I'm probably going to eat my words. So, so. De- yeah, exactly. Their their name alone implies failure. I mean, how can you not? How can you succeed with a name like the Browns? <laughs> you can't. Seriously. So my my waiver wire suggestion: uh, keep an eye on Dwayne Bow, just because it's either him or him or me, basically in Cleveland because they got no other targets. So Dwayne Bow would definitely be a solid waiver wire. Uh, keep your eye on. Don't, yeah, I don't have high hopes for him, but I had to pick somebody for this game. Absolutely. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it's not going to be Andrew Hawkins. Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, woo! 
Uh, really and my Hawkins. player that I'm going to pick to uh, get you points, uh, it's going to be Brandon Marshall, even though he's facing a lot of um, a lot of flack for his recent comments about how Brady got off scot-free because of his race. I would still say that Brandon Marshall, despite all the naysayers of people who are saying that number one wide receivers that go to the Jets never perform well, I think he's going to change that because he is an amazing wide receiver, and I think people are just sleeping on him. He is. So I, well, I think he's going to do pretty well in this game. He's going to start giving the Jets a legitimate threat at wide receiver. Uh, let's move on to the Colts and Buffalo. Now, the Colts riding high with all their free agent acquisitions and whatnot. They're going into the Niagara area to take on a very stout defense. Albert, what, what do you think of this game? The Colts are going to uh, come into a very ferocious matchup. I think that uh, the media and the fans community is a little bit overstating uh, what the Colts can necessarily uh, do, but I definitely favor them. I would say it's more of like a probably a, a 55-45 wash in the Colts' favor. Looking for a fancy favorite here. Uh, I definitely don't want to run anyone against the uh, uh, the Bills, so probably like a T.Y. Hilton, probably my, uh, my my guy. Andrew Luck probably have a good game, too. There you too. go. Uh, how about a waiver wire outlook from you, Seth? Well, I believe Tyrod Taylor, the quarterback for the Bills, who won the competition in preseason, Ooh, he could so definitely mm. really, really be a solid backup for you if he's if he's the real thing. And from the preseason, he looks like a taller Russell Wilson. But once again, it is a Bills quarterback, so don't hold your breath. You know what? I just realized we haven't been giving our picks for all these games, so obviously we're still in preseason form. Uh, why don't we just step back to Green Bay at Chicago. Albert, who do you have winning that game? Oh, Green oh, Bay. Okay, that was easy. Uh, Seth? I think Green Bay might have a shot. <laughs> I'm going to go Green Bay as well. Uh, Kansas City at Houston. Seth, who do you have? I like the Texans in this game. All right, cool. Texans at home for a home stand. What do you think, Albert? I would say Texans. Wow, I'm going to go Chiefs. Chiefs, go in there Cross and they lay an upset on them for sure. Uh, Cleveland at the Jets. We're all going Jets, obviously. I'm going to go Cleveland. Woo! What? Enjoy. Okay, and Indy at Buffalo, the player that I'm going to pick for you to get some points. Hey, uh, you were picking T.Y. Hilton. I would say definitely give Andre Johnson a call if you're looking for some fantasy points. People are sleeping on him. You probably picked him up in like the fourth or fifth round. Guess what? He is going to deliver in this game. I don't care how good Buffalo's front seven is. I don't care how good their secondary is. Andre Johnson, he be getting points. Mm -hmm. Next up, we've got Miami at Washington. Whew. Is this the moment where we get to see Ryan Tannehill ascend to the top tier of quarterback Albert? This will be a game where he scores a lot of fantasy points. This will be the first game of the season, so it could be his ascension to that next tier. Uh, I think if this, if this is the perfect matchup for him to do so, and uh, that we are going to see a clear and decisive victory in Miami and a clear and decisive victory for uh, Tannehill fans this week. Uh, who do you have on the waiver wire there, uh, Seth? I have Jordan Cameron, the tight end for the Dolphins. I really think that Jordan's had a solid career with no quarterbacks in Cleveland. So with somebody who could relatively play quarterback, he might have a big year. Wow, it's shocking. Mm -hmm. uh, how how much is he owned in uh, in leagues right now? I would guess less than uh, thirty percent. What? No, no, he was one of the top ten tight ends. He must be owned in like almost every league. Uh, tight ends are very fickle. A lot of people take names over production so in tight end there's a lot of names that you could choose over jordan cameron so he's really well i like it. Yeah. 
What I like about uh, tight ends on Miami is you have these pretty low names like uh, Charles Clay last year. They're still pretty good. And then you have an actual talent like Jordan Cameron in that system. Could pay dividends for sure. Uh, well, I've got a little bit of Jordan Cameron stock going on, so I'm really stoked about that. Uh, one name to keep in mind, I think, for the season, Matt Jones on Washington. Uh, Alfred Morris, of course, is solid and dependable, but Matt Jones is going to be getting some more work than you think he is. So definitely keep your eyes open for him if you get a chance. As far as points are concerned, though, I would stay away from anything Washington. Albert, who do you have? Mm -hmm. uh, certainly no one on Washington uh, in that matchup. Um, I take um, I've, if you have Tannehill as your quarterback, definitely start him. Uh, if you have Cameron as your uh, a, a flimmy like your tight end, definitely start him. Uh, I I'm not necessarily sold on anyone in this matchup, uh, but Deshaun Jackson obviously always has a huge upside. So if you want to go bombastic, put him in your flex. But that's the only Washington person I would even consider. Cool. Who's gonna win? Uh, Miami. Miami. For sure. Okay, Seth. Miami. And three for Miami. Let's move on to the Carolina Panthers and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh, man. Seth, let me get your impressions of this particular game. Are the Panthers going to prove to be the bigger cat in this matchup? Well, what I think is underrated is, is that Jacksonville does have a very, very uh, good advantage with their defensive line against Carolina's god-awful mm -hmm. offensive line. So it's going to be a fun – this is going to be the underrated fun game to watch. But in the end, you got Cam Newton versus a, a rebuilding team for the past 10 years. So I would take Carolina in a heartbeat. I, I like that a lot, actually. Albert, uh, if there's one player that you could play out of all the players in this game, who would it be? Uh, I'd probably go with uh, Robinson. I think he's definitely going to get a touchdown, and he's going to be good for some yards. Him and, his, him, him and the Brawls connection are good. Though the team is going to lose, I do like what they have going on there. And from a fancy standpoint, I do like that, so I would take Robinson uh, to start. But Carolina for yeah, victory, I absolutely. Go, uh, I would run a flyer on Allen Robinson any day for sure. I would say if you're, if you're running with Gray Golson in your tight end position, he is going to be one of the major outlets mm -hmm, totally. uh, for sure. So uh, from Carolina's oh, point of view, one. you definitely want to be getting them. Uh, let's go with Seth first, Carolina or Jacksonville. Oh, Carolina, yeah. But I do want to mention yep. that you should uh, also take a look at Gray Blake Bortles, other receiver, Marcus Lee, if you just keep an eye on his targets because he could get some thrown his way and be a good possession receiver. Oh, that's Actually, that's a really good point because Marquise Lee was looking like he could have been uh, one of the major receiving threats even last year, but then injuries to like that whole, mm -hmm. that whole wide receiver group really did push him down the depth chart or at least uh, the fantasy football community's kind of uh, realm of consciousness. Uh, let's see, Albert. Who do you have, Carolina or Jacksonville? I have Carolina, hands we'll down. Three for Carolina. Next up, Seattle is in St. Louis. It's the Seahawks versus the Rams. Uh, let's start with Albert. Albert, do you think that we're going to see some craziness at QB with Seattle? I think that uh, Russell Wilson's going to have a solid game. I think he'll play a conservative. Traditionally, although the Rams have not had success the past several seasons, they've always given Seattle trouble. So it'll be an interesting first week matchup. So I definitely uh, would say that uh, Russell Wilson's going to have a pretty solid game, and Marshawn Lynch as well is going to uh, they're both going to break out pretty well. But be interesting, interesting game to watch for, for sure. sure. Seth, who do you have on the waiver wire for this game? I actually have Nick Foles. Everybody's been talking about Sam Bradford and the Chip Kelly system. But if you look at Nick Foles, he does not really turn the ball over that much, and he could use those possession receivers to his advantage. That's a really neat take. Uh, <laughs> sorry, that caught me by surprise. Nick Foles, of all people, I never thought I'd be talking about him in a positive light ever again. Um, <laughs> You're a little bit Beulah biased, though. He kind of let you down. He let you down a little bit, and oh, yeah, he uh, did. for sure. Oh yeah, he. And I and I, I can only imagine your your pain. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Oh well, we we've moved on now, haven't we? Uh, let's see. Uh, Albert, who do you have, Seattle or St. Louis? Seattle. Seattle for sure. 
Seattle for okay. sure. You hear me? And then Seth, if we could get a little bit less movement, uh, who do you have, Seattle or St. Louis? I actually have St. Louis. I like their defensive line against the Seahawks offensive line. Yeah, you know what? I actually like that pick a lot. And if you're looking for like a, a kind of a you know an underdog pick or an underdog play, St. Louis at home. St. Louis always plays them hard. St. Louis has had more continuity than Seattle. Seattle has a lot of question marks going into there, uh, going into St. Louis. So I like that. That's really cool. I'm still gonna go Seattle. Seattle will squeak it out, but uh, geez, uh, it's gonna be a close one. A lot closer than people think, obviously. Uh, now we, we're running out of time. Let's just quickly run down just your picks for these games. Uh, New Orleans at Arizona. We've got the Saints at the Cardinals. Uh, who do you like there, Albert? I like the Saints. Cool, Seth. Cardinals. Wicked. Detroit at San Diego. Uh, I pick the Cardinals. Uh, Detroit versus San Diego. Let's hear from Seth. I'll go San Diego, the home team. All right, and I'll go San Diego and Albert. Austin. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, we'll be talking about this later. Detroit all the way. <laughs> Hard, hardcore. We'll be talking about this. Them, but there you go. Uh, Tennessee and Tampa Bay. That's going to be a really awesome matchup. Uh, let's start with uh, no. Let's start with Albert. Albert, who do you have? Tennessee. Ooh, that's going to be a that's going to be a fun one. I say oh, Tampa you know Bay. What? It's going to be a lot, a lot of fun for sure. I, I hope to be watching that one as well. Seth, who do you have? I'll take Mariota and the Titans. Oh, you know what? I love that. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Bucks. I'm gonna go Tampa Bay there. Uh, Cincinnati, Oakland, Bengals, Raiders. Uh, who you got, Seth? Bengals. Albert. I got my uh, my Tigers. Yeah, my I, I'll go Bengals as well. We've got the Ravens at the Broncos. Uh, uh, let's go, Albert. Ooh, I would say this is almost a wash too, and I'm gonna say the slight edge to the Broncos. Okay, Seth. Broncos all Broncos the way. Broncos heavy for me. The, <laughs> this is gonna be a bloodbath. The Giants versus Dallas. What a great Sunday night game that is. Uh, who do you have, Seth? I have Dallas. It's gonna be fun. Oh yeah, for sure. And uh, Albert. Wishful Giants, practical uh, Cowboys. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat. Uh, I'm gonna pick Giants. Why not? Because who cares? Um, Philly is playing Atlanta at Atlanta. Uh, who do you have, Albert? Fly Eagles, fly. Yeah. I mean, Seth, who do you have? I have Atlanta. Oh, that's okay. Die in a fire. Okay. Uh, no, I mean. <laughs> Really? <laughs> oh. All right. Well, we shall see. I just think oh, any defensive improvement for Atlanta means that they get pushed to the top of the division. I, they're a sleeper team for me this year. Yeah. No. You know what? I actually agree with that, okay. and I did like okay. the moves that uh, Dimitriov made in the off season. I'm still going Philly. That's both with my heart and my head, though, because uh, Philly has also improved, in my opinion. Uh, we've got the last game: the Vikings at the 49ers. Who cares? Yeah, totally. Who gives a shit? I would say 49ers. Seth. Uh, I'll go the home team, 49ers. Okay, and I'll go Minnesota because I want them to be huge or something. Who really cares? Seth, where can we find you on social media? Uh, uh, at S-L-A-Z-E-A-R-1 on Twitter. So definitely check it out. I just post silly little dumb observations. Love it, love it. And then, Albert, where can we find you on Twitter? You may find me at black, B-L-A-C-K underscore Birch, B-I-R-C-H underscore. Awesome. Uh, and you can find me at at Dan RPL. Definitely check out the show. We're soon going to be having lots of videos posted up on our YouTube page. Go to YouTube.com slash Pinkskin Pointers. I am Ryan Philip Lamb. And for Albert Gabriel and Seth Lazier, thank you for listening to Pigskin Pointers. <laughs>